Beringia. For generations, it has become a synonym for a schoolyard theory about a simple land bridge that ancient peoples used to cross from Asia to America during the Ice Age. Although newer theories have emerged in recent decades, like the Kelp Highway hypothesis suggesting coastal migrations, Beringia has remained crucial to our understanding of how humans reached the Americas. Yet, while archaeologists have conducted numerous studies throughout this ancient landscape, recovering stone tools, animal bones, and traces of hearths and dwellings, the actual human remains of those travelers have remained extraordinarily elusive. Most of Beringia now lies beneath seawater. However, a discovery in central Alaska changed everything. In the summer of 2013, archaeologists working at Upward Sun River in Alaska's Tanana River Basin made a discovery both heartbreaking and scientifically invaluable. At the bottom of a circular hearth in what had once been an early Native American dwelling, they found the skeletons of two infants lying side by side. One infant, who would later be designated USR1, had died between 6 and 12 weeks after birth. The other, USR2, was a late-term fetus at approximately 30 weeks of gestation, who had apparently been stillborn or died shortly after premature birth. Both were covered with an undisturbed layer of red ochre, a mineral pigment associated with burial ritual and ceremony across cultures. Radiocarbon dating and stratigraphic analysis revealed the age of this burial approximately 11,500 years old, making these the earliest human remains ever found in the northern reaches of North America. The infants were not alone in their grave. Four decorated antler rods, two lithic dart points, and additional stone tools accompanied them. The antler rods and dart points likely formed part of a weapon system, or hunting implements, used to bring down the large game that sustained these early peoples. The burial pit lay directly beneath another remarkable feature. The cremated remains of a three-year-old child found within the central hearth and dating to the same period that had been discovered in 2010. The two burial events were contemporaneous, dating to the same brief period, yet their treatments diverged sharply. The three-year-old was cremated in an elaborate ceremony, while the infants were carefully buried with grave goods intact. Together, the three are, to date, the only confirmed human remains from that period found in the area that was once Beringia. But the true revelation of the upward Sun River discovery would come not from the bones themselves, nor from the artifacts buried with them, but from the genetic information held within those ancient remains, their DNA. A team from the University of Utah undertook the work of extracting and analyzing genetic material from the infant's bones. They focused initially on mitochondrial DNA, the genetic material contained within the mitochondria which is passed only from mother to child without recombination, creating clear maternal lineages that can be traced back through time. Despite the age of the remains, the team succeeded in sequencing the complete mitochondrial genomes of both infants. The cremated remains of the three-year-old child could not be genetically analyzed, as the intense heat of cremation had destroyed any DNA. When they analyzed the sequences, they made a crucial discovery. The two infants buried together belonged to two different mitochondrial DNA haplogroups. Haplogroups are major branches of the human genetic family tree, defined by shared mutations that indicate descent from a common maternal ancestor. USR1, who had died between 6 and 12 weeks after birth, carried the C1B lineage, a genetic signature found today among indigenous peoples from the Great Lakes and northeastern woodlands of North America, such as Ojibwe and Abenaki, to tribal communities across the Amazon basin in Brazil, Peru, and Colombia. USR2, the stillborn, carried the B2 lineage, another distinctly Native American genetic marker that appears across indigenous populations from the Arctic of Alaska and northern Canada through Mexico and Central America, and into South America, all the way to Patagonia in southern Chile. To understand the significance, we must examine the larger puzzle of Native American origins. Indigenous peoples of the Americas belong to five major mitochondrial DNA haplogroups, designated A, B, C, D, and X. The presence of five haplogroups raised an obvious question. Did this diversity result from multiple waves of migration from Asia at different times, with each wave bringing a different haplogroup? Or could there be another explanation? Some researchers had proposed an alternative hypothesis, one that would come to be known as the Beringian standstill model. It posits that a single major wave of people entered Beringia from Asia and remained there for thousands of years. During this prolonged isolation, cut off by distance, climate, massive ice sheets, and other factors, the Beringian population differentiated genetically. New mutations arose and spread. Genetic drift created variation. The five haplogroups didn't represent five separate migrations, but genetic diversity that evolved within Beringia itself. The Upward Sun River infants provided direct evidence for this model. 
Both C1b and B2 are common in Native American populations, but non-existent in Asia, strongly suggesting these genetic markers arose after the ancestral population had entered Beringia. Using molecular clock techniques, a method that estimates the age of genetic lineages by measuring how quickly mutations accumulate over time, the team estimated C1b arose approximately 12,800 years ago and B2 around 12,000 years ago after entry into Beringia but before expansion into the Americas. Now, an international team has sequenced USR1's complete nuclear genome. The results were even more remarkable. USR1 was genetically different from all other Native Americans, both ancient and modern. Her DNA shows that she belonged to a unique ancient Beringian population one that lived at the same time as the ancestors of today's indigenous peoples, but followed its own separate genetic path. Through sophisticated demographic modeling, researchers pieced together a detailed timeline. By this point, the ancestral Native American population had already formed as a distinct group, shaped by long periods of separation and mixing with other ancient peoples. With this genetic foundation in place, they moved into Beringia, where ice sheets blocked passage south and harsh conditions limited other movement. Around 21,000 to 20,000 years ago, the Beringian population split into two groups. One became the ancient Beringians, represented by USR1. The ancient Beringians remained in Alaska for thousands of years, adapting to harsh conditions. Meanwhile, the other branch eventually found roots south. But what happened to the ancient Beringians? Genetic evidence suggests that after 11,500 years ago, people carrying northern Native American ancestry moved northward back into Alaska. This back migration may have replaced or absorbed the ancient Beringian population, whose distinct genetic signature disappeared from the record even as elements of their material culture persisted. Yet, even as these genetic revelations support the Beringian standstill model, new archaeological evidence still complicates how people entered the Americas. The ice-free corridor, once thought the main route south, did not become biologically viable until about 13,800 years ago after humans had already reached far southern sites, so it was closed during the initial spread. This strengthens the coastal migration, or the Kelp Highway hypothesis, in which maritime peoples traveled down the Pacific coast using rich marine resources. However, much of this coastline is now submerged, so studying it is a challenge. The schoolyard theory of Beringia as a simple land bridge has indeed been challenged. Beringia was not merely a highway, but more of a home in which Native American genetic identity was forged. The Upward Sun River infants sit at the center of these debates. They are the most important human fossils from Beringia, a region vital to human prehistory, yet yielding very few ancient skeletons, because most of it is submerged, glaciated, or chemically hostile to preservation. These infants are virtually the only remains from this period with high-quality genetic data. As research continues, new discoveries and improved analytical techniques will refine this picture. Each additional study may reveal clearer timelines, migration routes, and population relationships, ensuring that our understanding of the first peopling of the Americas will continue to evolve, and more importantly, improve. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like, subscribe, and leave a comment with your thoughts or questions. See you next time!